Bath 124 Spider, the MX-5 being its biggest rival. Let's have a look at both of these today and see which one's really best. The MX-5 is a sneaky little fox. You better watch out, you better be on your A game. This has got some tricks on its sleeve. The Mazda MX-5 is made to have fun in. Lightweight, rear wheel drive, LSD in the back, that's what it's all about. This one's got some bolt-on modifications, which turns it into more of a precise car rather than a toy. So what I do love about the little MX-5 is, it's really friendly and approachable, it's easy to use, everything works like it should. Again, it's another really good little rear wheel drive car. Lighter, it's got that real agile light feeling, but it's all just basic engineering. If you look at this car, the modifications that have been done to it, they really nailed it. It just looks so beautiful. The whole idea with this car was to be lightweight, but it doesn't have a tinny feel. It's it all feels like it's put together right and it's solid. It, it feels like it does need a bucket seat though. It just feels a little bit like you're getting thrown about about the bucket seat. It's got an electric roof which just obviously stop and fold down really easily. It's a pretty chilled out little motor. When you're just cruising about, you can take it easy. It's a really easy car to drive, quick to be fair. It's really, really, just feels like mistakes are quickly absorbed into the chassis. It just, even with the saddle it's got now, it's just, it feels very good. So the little MX-5, now it's been beefed up with some Maestro oil over It's got pretty decent grip, but if anything, they could do the harder spring race still. It's got 8052 Yoko Homes on it, which makes the, obviously, grip. You're not really wrestling it. Even when it's on its limits, it just kind of neutrally breaks away. Obviously, that's partially due to the setup, but it's, it, it's just very predictable, very, very easy. This particular car also comes with six piston Willwood calipers and a lightweight strengthened alloy, which makes the stopping power pretty serious on this car. If anything, they overwhelm the spring rate. And the good thing is because it's so lightweight, the, the components take, don't take as much stress as they usually would. MX-5 Sky Active engine's got 158 horsepower, and gets from 0 to 60 in around seven seconds. It's connected to a six-speed manual gearbox, which feels good, but the engine itself just feels a little bit characterless, a little bit dry. Here we are, the MX-5's biggest rival. <laughs> the 124 Spidey. You can tell it's similar to the MX-5 in here. It's the same kind of shape everywhere, but it's got obviously different style. It's got like Alcantara and red stitching and lots of little bits that make it its own. There's loads of R bath badges everywhere. You see them everywhere. It's as if they're trying to tell you, it's definitely not an MX-5. Well, I like these heated seats. These are nice. We're not in Barbados this time, we're actually in Zante comes with a 1.4 turbocharged engine, similar to the one in the 595R Bath Comp. We did a video on that. You can find that down there somewhere. Comes with a six-speed manual gearbox with a limited slip differential of standard. It's not got a huge amount of power, about 170 horsepower. It feels fairly sufficient, really. Engine feels quite giving. Compared to the two-liter lamp of the MX-5, it feels a lot more revvy. Definitely more of a fan of the 1.4. Turbo lump. It's got a Garrett Turbo on there as well. The engine sat quite far back in the chassis as well. 
so that should help with kind of front axle grip. That electric front is just a little bit, was a little bit numb. Again, yeah, it's something in the MX-5, I don't really like that. Have you got it in sport mode, mate? I don't know what that is. Oh, I have now, maybe that'll help. Okay, yeah, the throttle feels much better now. It feels a lot better. Revs a lot freer, and it's not got that dead point at the start. I think from 4,000 to six, just over 6,000 is like the sweet spot in the rev range. That's when the turbo is at its best. Low down, there's a bit of lag. So we've got a Koenig lightweight flow formed alloy on here. Um, we've also got Brembo brakes at the front, and we're using a Michelin 225-4517 on the front. And if we have a look at the rear, and on the rear we've got a 225-4517 as well. So it's got a square setup. So we'll see how that works out on the road. The brakes on these kind of cars though are usually sufficient. You just need a decent pad and disc on there. Again, you don't want to add weight. But these feel like they've got, they just feel like they've got a lot of bite. The brakes just feel a little bit weak. Gotta be honest. I mean, realistically, this is a rear wheel drive, lightweight sports car. It should stop better than it's stopping. I'm gonna go so far as say, it's not Mars bars. It's not Twixes, they're frumps. The brake pads are actually made from frumps on this car. They're that bad. So this particular car has got an ST XTA coilover setup on it, which is uh, owned by KW apparently, which is obviously very good. In my opinion, immediately, the spring rates feel a little bit soft. It doesn't really feel too far off the stand standard setup. Maybe a couple of kg heavy all around. I don't know what's coming. Probably be able to see through the camera. So we're riding on a kind of gravelly road right now, and you'll probably see how much the car's shaking about. I wanted to adjust the dampeners with this little tool here. The problem is the strut brace is in the way, so we can't really do that. But yeah, it would be nice to wind the dampener up a bit. The front end feels well sorted. The rear end feels loose and kind of dangerous. It's making me nervous because it feels imprecise. I don't quite know what's going on with the front or rear end. It just feels a bit detached. And that's just due to the steering feel. The strong point I'm going to mention about this car is it's got an LSD, which helps it come out of a corner a lot tidier. Now it's got traction control. It's got ABS built in as well, which is obviously just standard. Every car's got ABS. No, you can't take that out because if it rains, people will explode. It sounds a lot better than the MX-5. <laughs> The truth is with these kind of cars, if you want to drive them on their limit, as they are a standard, in my opinion, I don't really like them. But if you harden them right up and put some good spring rates on there, some good coilovers, yes, the car drives a little bit different when you're just pooling around, probably not as nice, but when it's on its limit, it feels a lot better. It's a bit of a hard comparison, this one, because the MX-5 is a heavily modified car, more so than this. The lad who owns the MX-5 is really chasing performance. He's, he's quite a focused individual, like a focused driver. But I'm not sure the lad who owns this is quite as intent on finding sheer you know, ground covering characteristics. It's a beautiful car. I actually prefer it to the MX-5. Definitely a better looking car in my eyes. The engine's obviously a bit better, got a better tuning capacity. Here's some brutal honesty for you here, people. If you're looking to buy a car that you want to take to the track, drive on the road, you want to really hammer it, dance on its limit, don't buy either of them. They're not that kind of car. They haven't got that level of precision. You're going to have to pour a good few quid into it if you wanted to get there. Like, so the MX-5 ND has obviously got coilovers, you know, decent Maestro coilover, big anti-roll bars, tuning. But if you're looking for a car to not go crazy in the mx5 and the 124r bath spider is worth getting they're fun before their limits when you're not really wringing their neck they're actually fun 
But if you're looking for a limit precise car, don't buy either of them. Because if that's what you're looking for, just a performance, go and buy a Mark 1 or a Mark 2 MX-5 or a MR2 Roadster with a few modifications, because they're all modified, you know? And you can just tune the geometry and use that. And you're not that bothered about crashing it, smashing it, because it's a lot less money. Parts are very cheap, you know, put a new engine in a car, it's very cheap on an MX-5 or an MR2. But these are gonna cost you a little bit of money.